Hello everybody, welcome to this English course. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about nouns. Because in English, nouns are very important. They are the basic element of a sentence. So if you want to speak English, you need to know about the different kinds of nouns. And I'm going to try and teach you as well as I can. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start with concrete nouns. Now in English, concrete nouns are people, places or things, including animals, that you can see, that you can smell or taste or hear or touch. So you can basically use your five senses. Let me give you a few examples. If we talk about people, you could say a man or a teacher or me, Fanny, or Mr. Smith. If we talk about places, you could say a house, a school. You could name a city like London, very nice city, or a beach. And if you talk about things, you could say a shoe, you could say a marker, you could talk about a dog, or food, like a pizza. These are concrete nouns, okay? Now, let's move on to abstract nouns. So, abstract nouns, unlike concrete nouns, are ideas, concepts, emotions, and you can't see an idea. You can't smell a concept, you can't taste an emotion, or hear it, or touch it. So they are nouns, they are things that exist, but you cannot see them or taste them. You can't use your five senses. To give you a few examples, we could talk about love, or time, or religion, rules. These are all words that represent ideas, concepts, okay? They're abstract nouns in English. Now, let's get into more detail about nouns. Let's now see the difference between common nouns and proper nouns, which are very important in English. So, common nouns and proper nouns refer to people, places, things, ideas. Let's see a few examples. We could talk about people, for example, a woman, that's a common noun. But if we talk about a specific woman, for example, me, Fanny, that becomes a proper noun with a capital F because, and you should know this, proper nouns are always capitalized. You could talk about places, a city, that's a common noun. But then you can name a specific city, let's take a great city, London, of course, with a capital L, remember, proper nouns, always capitalized. We can talk about things, for example, an animal, let's take a dog, a dog, that's a common noun. But if we take a specific dog, like Snoopy, capital S, that's the proper noun. If we talk about things again, but for example, a car, that's a common noun. But if we name the brand, the specific brand of the car, like Volvo, that's a proper noun and it takes a capital V. And finally, uh, we can say a team, common noun, but if we name a specific team, for example, the best football team, Manchester United, then that's a proper noun and it's capitalized. Now, mind you, team is a special word because it's called a collective noun in English because it refers to a group of people. So collective nouns can be used as singular nouns or plural nouns, but we will talk about this again later. So now that we know a lot about nouns in English, let's practice finding nouns in a sentence. Okay? First, in my class at Oxford University, I have many friends. 
My best friend is Jen. I have a lot of love for her. Jen has a cute dog. Its name is Juju. What are the nouns in these sentences? If we take the first sentence, in my class at Oxford University, I have many friends. We have class and friends. These are common nouns. We also have a proper noun, Oxford University. We know it's a proper noun because it's capitalized. The second sentence is, my best friend is Jen. Now in this sentence, the noun is friend, common noun. And there's also the word Jen is also a noun, but a proper noun, as you can see, it's capitalized. Then I have a lot of love for her. What noun can you see? Of course, love. Remember the abstract noun we talked about a few minutes ago. And finally, Jan has a cute dog. Its name is Juju. What nouns can we find? We can see Jen, again, proper noun, dog, common noun, but also name and juju. Name is a common noun, juju is the proper noun, it's capitalized. As you probably know, I haven't mentioned I or her or it. They are also nouns, but they are pronouns and they're considered a different category in English. We will talk about them in another video. Great job, guys! Thank you for watching my video. I hope you now have a better understanding of nouns in English. Please keep practicing. Practice makes perfect. I'm sure you will very soon be able to recognize nouns in a sentence. Please make sure to watch my next video as I keep on talking about nouns. See you! Thank you for watching my video guys, if you've liked this video please click like, subscribe to our channel, show us your support, put your comments below and share this video. Thank you. Hello guys and welcome to this English course on nouns. In today's video we're going to talk about singular and plural nouns. When you speak English it is very important to know the difference between a singular noun and a plural noun. Okay, so I will explain to you the different rules and we will practice together. Let's get started. Okay guys, the first thing you need to know is that a singular noun means one. So, for example, I can say cat a cat or one cat. School, a school, one school. Team, now don't forget team is a collective noun. It's a group of people but still it is a singular noun. We talk about a team or one team. Lady, monkey, tomato, a tomato, one tomato, or piano. Now, if we talk about plural nouns, it means more than one. So, for example, two, three, four, or many. If we take our words again, a cat becomes cats. Two cats, three cats, many cats. School becomes schools. Team becomes teams, okay? So you just add an S. Now, lady becomes ladies. Monkey becomes monkeys, but two different rules. As you can see, lady is consonant Y. Now, when you have consonant Y in an English word, the plural will be I, E, S. Lady, ladies. But when you have vowel Y, like monkey, 
it just becomes monkeys. You simply add an S. Okay, monkey becomes monkeys. Tomato becomes tomatoes. Piano, pianos. Again, two different rules. Now, tomato becomes tomatoes. You add ES. And with most words ending in O, so consonant O, you will add ES. But sometimes you will only add S, like piano, pianos. There is no particular rule for this. You just need to know the words that only end with an S. Okay, let's move on to some pronunciation now. So, when it comes to pronunciation, we have three different sounds. The first sound is S. The second sound is Z. And the third sound is Is. So let's review some words together and be really careful. What sound do you hear? Cats. Cats. What can you hear? S. Can you repeat after me? Cats. Cats. The second word is schools. Schools. What sound can you hear? Of course, z. Repeat after me. Schools. Schools. The third word is teams. What sound can you hear? Again, z. Repeat after me. Teams. Teams. Then we have ladies. Ladies. Z. Repeat after me. Ladies. Ladies. Then monkeys. Z. Again. Repeat after me. Monkeys. Monkeys. Then we have tomatoes. Again, it's the Z sound. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. And finally, pianos. Z. Pianos. Pianos. Let's move on to other rules now. Okay, guys, let's now talk about nouns that end in S, SH, X, CH, or Z. Now, to make the plural form of these nouns, you will add ES, and the sound will be IS. Let's review some words together. Bus becomes buses. Bush, bushes. Fox, foxes. Beach, beaches. Quiz, quizzes. Can you repeat after me? Buses. Buses. Bushes. Bushes. Foxes. Foxes. Beaches. Beaches. Quizzes. Quizzes. Let's move on. Okay, guys, moving on to nouns ending in F or FE. For example, roof becomes roofs. Safe, safes. So you simply add an S. Then we have leaf that becomes leaves. Wait a minute, what happened? Well, yeah, sometimes in English, a word ending in F becomes a word ending in V-E-S in plural. That's not a rule, but some words end in V-E-S. You just have to learn them, I'm afraid. Another word, wife, and again, V-E-S, wives. 
shelf, shelves, again, this V-E-S ending. Now let's focus on pronunciation. Roofs, so it's an S sound. Can you repeat after me? Roofs, roofs, good job. Safes, safes. Have you heard the S sound? Safes. Then we have leaves, and this time it's a Z sound. Repeat after me. Leaves, leaves. Great. Moving on, wives. Wives. And finally, shelves. Shelves. Great job, guys. Let's move on to practice now. Well, students, let's now practice together. I'm going to give you a singular noun and I want you to try and find the plural form of this singular noun. Okay? Let's give it a try. The first word is baby. Baby. Don't forget, it ends with consonant Y. Do you remember the rule? It's babies with I-E-S. Very nice. Baby, babies. The second word is toy. Hmm. Vowel Y. So this time, toys, you simply add an S. Then we have wish. Wish is a word that ends in SH. Remember the rule. Wishes, you add ES. Taxi becomes taxis. You simply add an S. Choice choices. Simply add an S as well. Then we have the word wolf. Aha! It's a word ending in F. Is it a word with V-E-S? It is. Wolves. And finally, photo. Now remember the words ending in O? You can add E-S or simply S. Well, with photo, you simply add an S. Photos. Now, if we focus on pronunciation now, repeat the words after me. Babies. The sound is Z. Babies. Toys. Toys. Wishes. Remember this is sound? Repeat after me. Wishes. Taxis. Taxis. Choices. Choices. Wolves. Wolves. And finally, photos. Photos. Excellent job, guys. Now, let's move on to some example sentences. I have some example sentences for you guys using singular and plural nouns. I'd like you to repeat the sentences after me and be really careful to use proper pronunciation. Let's get started. First, I want a dog. I like dogs. Repeat after me, guys. I want a dog. I like dogs. The second sentence. I don't want a fox. I don't like foxes. After me, guys. I don't want a fox. I don't like foxes. 
Great. Moving on to the third sentence. I bought a watch. I have many watches. Repeat after me. I bought a watch. I have many watches. Good job! Sentence 4 now. I have a new stereo. Now I have two stereos. After me. I have a new stereo. Now I have two stereos. Excellent! And finally, there's a knife. There are six knives in the kitchen. Repeat after me. There's a knife. There are six knives in the kitchen. Amazing job, guys! Very nice! I hope this has helped. I hope you now understand better singular and plural nouns in English. Now, I haven't talked about all the pronunciation rules, but I hope you have a good sense now of how to pronounce plural forms. Make sure you watch my next video if you want to know more about nouns in English. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Thank you for watching my video, guys. If you've liked this video, please show me your support. Click like, subscribe to the channel, put your comments below and share the video. See you! Hello, guys! Welcome to this English course on nouns. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about irregular plural nouns. Now, there are crazy ways of making plural forms in English and there are a lot of irregular forms. I want you to know about them. So, let's get started. Again, guys, there are so many irregular plural forms in English and I'm afraid there are no particular rules. You just need to learn the words but I'm going to try and tell you about the most common words, okay? Let's review some words together. Okay, so, for example, we have a singular noun, which is woman. Its plural form is women. Woman, women. Then we have man, the singular noun, a man. It becomes men. A child becomes children. A tooth, teeth. A foot becomes feet. A person becomes people. A mouse becomes mice. Okay, let's move on to pronunciation now. Well, students, let's work on pronunciation a bit. Please repeat after me. Woman. Woman. Women. Women. Good. Man. Man. Men. Men. Child, child, children, children. Very good, guys. Moving on. Tooth, tooth, teeth, teeth. Foot, foot, feet, feet, person, person, people.
people. People. Very good, guys. And the last one, mouse. Mouse. Mice. Mice. Excellent, guys. Let's now move on to other irregular plural forms. Now, there are words that have the exact same singular and plural forms. They are not common, but you need to know a few. Let's take a look together. As you can see, sheep is the singular form, but the plural form is not sheeps. It is sheep. Same goes for deer, deer. Moose, moose. Fish, fish. Aircraft, aircraft. Okay, so you will say, I see one sheep, but also I see two sheep. The exact same word. Okay, let's go back for pronunciation. I want you to repeat after me. Sheep, sheep, deer, deer, moose, moose, fish, fish, aircraft, aircraft. Good job, guys. Let's move on now to other irregular forms. Some nouns are never singular. We always use their plural forms. I have a few common ones for you guys. Let's have a look. Jeans, pants, glasses, sunglasses, clothes, scissors, pajamas. So you will say, I have some jeans or I have scissors. But you cannot say, I have a jean. It is incorrect in English. Let's work a bit on pronunciation. Repeat after me, please. Jeans. Jeans. Pants. Pants. Glasses. Glasses. Sunglasses. Sunglasses. Clothes. Clothes. Scissors. Scissors. And finally, pyjamas, pyjamas. Good guys, let's now look at other irregular plural forms. Now, just a few words about nouns in English that have Latin and Greek origins. Their plural forms are very weird. Now, it's a bit complicated, so we're not going to go into too much detail. Don't worry too much about them. But, just a few words that I think you should know. First, we have words ending in A. Their plural form will end in A-E. For example, antenna becomes antennae. Alumna, alumni. Words ending in U-S, us, will end in I. Octopus, octopi. Cactus, cacti. Words ending in I-S will end in E-S. Is becomes E's. For example, analysis, analyses. Diagnosis, Diagnoses. And finally, words ending in O-N and in A. 
criterion, criteria, phenomenon, phenomena. These plural forms are very difficult, guys. Even native speakers make a lot of mistakes. So don't worry too much about them. I just wanted to give you a little taste of Latin and Greek plurals. Okay, let's move on to example sentences now. Okay, guys, I have a few example sentences for you. It's a great opportunity to practice saying irregular plural forms in English. Now, be very careful to use proper pronunciation as well. Let's start. First, my sister has one child. My brother has two children. Repeat after me. My sister has one child. My brother has two children. Next. I'm a quiet person, so I don't talk to many people. Please repeat after me. I'm a quiet person, so I don't talk to many people. Good, guys. Next sentence. Did you catch one fish or two fish at the lake? Repeat after me, please. Did you catch one fish or two fish at the lake? Very good. Next sentence. I have one pair of glasses and two pairs of sunglasses. Repeat after me. I have one pair of glasses and two pairs of sunglasses. Excellent, guys. And finally, he has one cactus in his front yard, but many cacti in his backyard. Repeat after me. He has one cactus in his front yard. But many cacti in his backyard. OK, students, I hope you repeated after me and you practiced your pronunciation. I hope you now have a better understanding of irregular plural forms in English. There are many of them, not many rules to follow, a lot of words to memorize, but I'm sure with a little bit of practice, you can do it. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you watch the other videos as well. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching my video. If you've liked this video, please show me your support. Click like, subscribe to our channel. Put your comments below and share the video. Thank you very much. See you. Hello guys. Welcome back to this English course on nouns. In today's video, I'm going to tell you about compound nouns. They are very common in English and there are thousands of them. You need to know about them. Let's get started. A compound noun is made up of two different words. So you take two words, you put them together to create a new noun. They're usually quite easy to understand. For example, full moon. Full is obviously the adjective describing the moon. Let's take a look at other examples and how to create compound nouns. Sometimes compound nouns are a single noun, like toothpaste. Sometimes there are two or more words hyphenated, such as mother-in-law. And sometimes there are two separate words, like ice cream. 
Now, you have to be careful. Sometimes you have a simple adjective plus a noun, like a greenhouse, but you also have a compound noun which has a different meaning, a greenhouse. Now, a greenhouse is a house which is green, but the compound noun, a greenhouse, is a place where you grow plants. Completely different meaning. Okay, so you have to be careful. Stresses can help. Usually the stress is on the first syllable in compound nouns. Okay, I hope you get it guys. Let's uh, take a closer look now at compound nouns. Okay, let's now take a look at the parts of speech that make up a compound noun. We can have a noun and another noun, like bedroom. We can also have a noun and a verb, like haircut. A noun and a preposition, like passerby. A verb and a noun, like washing machine. A verb and a preposition, like drawback. A preposition and a noun, like underground. An adjective and a verb, like dry cleaning. An adjective and a noun, like software. Or a preposition and a verb, like input. As you can see, guys, there are so many ways to create compound nouns with different words. Now let's get back to our examples for pronunciation. Please repeat after me. Bedroom. Bedroom. Haircut. Haircut. Passerby. Passerby. Washing machine. Washing machine. Drawback. Drawback. Underground. Underground. Dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. Software. Software. Input. Input. Good job, guys. Let's now move on to plural compound nouns. So when we want to make compound nouns plural, there are rules to follow. If you have a single word, you simply add an S. But if you have separate words, whether hyphenated or not, you will make the most significant word plural. Let's take a look at examples. Newspaper will simply be newspapers. So I have many newspapers. Swimming pool. Now what's the most significant word? Well, it is pool. So we will say there are two swimming pools. You cannot say there are two swimming's pools. No S, but swimming. Brother-in-law, what's the most significant word? Well, of course, it is brother. So you will say, I have two brothers-in-law. And finally, woman doctor. Now, what's the most significant word? Actually, both words are significant. So we will both make them plural. Remember, the plural form of woman is women. So we will say, for women doctors work at the hospital. Let's work on pronunciation. Can you repeat after me, please? I have many newspapers. I have many newspapers. There are two swimming pools. 
There are two swimming pools. I have two brothers-in-law. I have two brothers-in-law. And finally, four women doctors work at the hospital. Four women doctors work at the hospital. Good job, guys! Now, let's move on to practice. To practice, I have a few sentences and I want you to tell me if we are using compound nouns or not. Let's take a look. I want to drink some cold water. Is cold water a compound noun? What do you think? It isn't. Cold is a simple adjective describing the water. She has a new boyfriend. Is boyfriend a compound noun? Well, it isn't in this case. He's your friend and he's a boy. But the compound noun boyfriend in one word exists and has a different meaning. Then your boyfriend is more than a friend, he's the boy you're having a relationship with. Other example, the bluebird was singing in the tree. Is bluebird a compound noun? Not in this case. It's a simple bird and it's blue. But the compound noun bluebird in one word exists. It's a specific bird. Let's meet at the bus stop. Is bus stop a compound noun? What do you think? It is. And finally, I have two alarms clock. What about alarms clock? Well, it is a compound noun, but there is a big mistake. Can you see it? Of course, the plural form. The plural form is not alarms clock, but alarm clocks, because the most significant word is clock. Okay guys, let's move on. Thank you for watching. I hope you better understand uh, compound nouns and how to create them. There are so many compound nouns in the English language, but they are usually very easy to understand. And if you're not sure, look it up in a dictionary. The dictionary will tell you if it's a compound noun or not. Thank you for watching guys and see you in the next videos. Thank you for watching my video guys, if you've liked it, please show me your support, click like, subscribe to our channel, put your comments below and share the video. See you! Hello guys, welcome back to this English course on nouns. In this video I'm going to tell you about countable and uncountable nouns. It's very important to know the difference between countable and uncountable nouns in English and students often get confused. So please listen to me very carefully. Let's get started. Countable nouns are nouns that you can count. Uncountable nouns are nouns that you cannot count. They're usually a type or a group, and they're always singular. Let's look at a few examples. Countable nouns, you can say a dog. You can say one dog, two dogs, three dogs, and so on. Man, you can say a man, two men. Idea, you can say one idea, two ideas, and so on. Computer, again, you can say one computer, two computers. And house, well you can say one house, two houses, three houses and so on. These are countable nouns, you can count them. But if we look at uncountable nouns, when you say water, you can't say one water, two waters. It doesn't make any sense. You cannot count water. Same goes for air. 
You can't say one air, two airs. It's just air. It's uncountable. Traffic, English, equipment, these are all uncountable nouns. You cannot count them and they're always singular. Okay guys, now let's take a closer look at rules with countable nouns and uncountable nouns. So how do we know if a word is countable or uncountable? Well, there are a few tricks that can help. Let's look at these words. Some groups of words are very often uncountable and this can help you. For example, liquids, water, juice, milk, beer. All those words are uncountable. Powders, sugar, flour, salt, rice, uncountable words as well. Materials such as wood, plastic, metal or paper. Food as well, like fruit, meat, cheese and bread. And finally, abstract ideas like time, information, love and beauty. Another trick is that most of the time you can measure uncountable nouns. Let's look at examples. For example, if we take liquids, I have two liters of milk. Now, you cannot count milk but you can measure milk and you can count liters. So you can say, I have two liters of milk. You can say, I have a glass of water or I have glasses of water, cups of coffee, uh, bottles of water. So you can measure this uncountable noun. Same goes with powders. I have one kilogram of sugar, two kilograms of sugar. With materials and foods, we often use the word piece. For example, I ate two pieces of cake, or bread, or pizza, or meat, or cheese. I need pieces of paper, wood, plastic, metal, or I have some water. Some is an article that always works with uncountable nouns. Okay guys, I hope you understand. Let's move on. Some words can be both countable and uncountable nouns. Now, not all of them, but some of them. Let's take a look. I would like to eat some cake. I would like two pieces of cake. So in these two sentences, cake is obviously an uncountable noun. But if I say I would like to eat two cakes, suddenly it becomes a countable noun. Why? Because in the first two sentences, we are talking about pieces of one cake. In the last sentence, we are considering the whole cake, so it becomes countable. Another example, I would like to eat some chicken. I would like to eat a piece of chicken. Both sentences, uncountable noun, chicken. But the last sentence, I see two chickens. Hmm, chicken in this case is a countable noun. Why? Because in the first two sentences, chicken is food. But in the last sentence, chicken is an animal. So the animal is a countable noun. Chicken is food is uncountable. Hope you get it. Let's move on to example sentences now. Let's now review a few example sentences so you can practice using countable and uncountable nouns. Please repeat after me and be careful to use proper pronunciation. Let's get started. First sentence, guys. I put 100 candles on six cakes. Please repeat after me. 
I put 100 candles on six cakes. I put 100 candles on six cakes. Good job. Second example. I ate two pieces of cake. Repeat after me. I ate two pieces of cake. I ate two pieces of cake. Next sentence. I saw some trash on all the streets. Repeat after me. I saw some trash on all the streets. I saw some trash on all the streets. Very good. Next one. I need to buy some milk and some butter from the market. Please repeat after me. I need to buy some milk and some butter from the market. I need to buy some milk and some butter from the market. And finally, traffic and pollution are problems in many cities. Repeat after me. Traffic and pollution are problems in many cities. Traffic and pollution are problems in many cities. Good job, guys! I hope you repeated after me and worked on your pronunciation. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you now have a better understanding of countable and uncountable nouns. I know it's hard, but don't worry, keep practicing. Practice makes perfect. Thank you for watching my video and please watch the rest of the videos. Thank you guys for watching my video. If you've liked it, please show me your support by clicking like, by subscribing to the channel, by putting your comments below and sharing this video. Thank you very much and see you! Thank you for watching and please watch the other videos. I, I just uh, hesitated at the end. I, was, uh, I, I didn't know how to end it. I don't know how to end it. Thank what should I say? See you in the next video. See you in the next video. That's very nice. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you better understand uh, compound nouns and how to create them. And do it. Countable nouns are nouns that you can count. Okay, so for example, if you say a dog, you can say a dog, one dog, two dogs, three dogs, you can count them. Uncountable nouns. Stop, you gotta slow down. Uh, sorry, why am I going so fast? Okay, sorry. Slow down, take your time, make it a good video, okay? Countable nouns are nouns that you can count.